Hello everyone. As a part of Fuse podcast series, the undeniable truth about six skills versus based statistical programming heads that no one is telling you. Today we're going to talk about strategic mindset, described as seeing ahead to future possibilities and translating them into breakthrough strategies. We have Karen and Praveen. Hi Praveen, could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Praveen Garg. Uh, I head up the programming team for respiratory and immunology at AstraZeneca right now. Uh, but I started uh, my career with a uh, IT firm. And prior to that, my educational background is I'm a mechanical engineer by education. So after joining uh, the IT company, I moved up the ranks and uh, by the time I was leaving, uh, I was managing both the IT as well as the business teams. And then I switched over to a CRO before I joined AstraZeneca. Karen, would you kindly introduce yourself? I'm Karen Rowe and I work for Roche. I've just taken the new position on as the global head for data science covering immunology, ophthalmology and infectious disease. But up until recently, I was one of the global heads for statistical programming and analytics. Um, I joined industry as a computer scientist uh, working in the aircraft industry and then media newspapers before joining pharmaceuticals. And I think then I really did think I could make an impact to patient lives. And so this is where I'm deeply rooted. So as a leader, how do you practice strategic mindset in pharmaceutical industry? That's a really good question and I'm a big believer that everyone can practice strategic mindset and thinking whatever role you do. Now for me it's about considering the big picture and how that can support meeting an objective. So for me uh, my objective is to deliver more medicines to patients faster and hopefully cheaper and uh, at the moment I have focus areas one is around um, data, the abundance of data and the potential insights that we can make into that data. Secondly, is the advancements that technology has brought. So whether it's the change to our regulatory trials, um, whether it's the toolbox that we have to do our job or even working with regulators to deliver differently. And then thirdly, is a bit of a realization that we're driving science faster than we ever have before. And that needs a change in the way we'll, that we work. And that brings me nicely to thinking about all those strategic pieces to build my organization and really making sure that my teams are, have the right skills, um, capabilities, and even mindsets to really seize those opportunities brought by data technology and the science. And with that, I really see the evolution of the statistical programmer. Over the number of years, we've gone very much from a statistical programmer waiting for requirements, right up to now needing data scientists to join that journey in delivering medicines. Um, but Praveen, I'd be really interested to hear your perspective. So just to building on to what you said, Karen, it is important to think into the future look at how things are changing around us and really keep up with the pace of how things are changing. So if we look at uh, how the data is collected today, we are moving a lot more towards continuous data feeds. Either it is coming through electronic medical records or it's coming through like your variables. So the things are changing at quite a fast pace and the use of technology has also I would say accelerated in the last few years. And it will, uh, I would say, speed up more <laughs> as we use more and more technology. So it's important that we are aware of it and we make changes uh, based on that because regulators also are sort of now moving in that direction. And to build on uh, what you said around uh, people, yes. The role of statistical programmers have evolved quite a bit. Like, uh, there is a lot more expected in terms of leadership, in terms of uh, assertiveness and influencing so that we can educate others also in terms of what we do, how we do it. And it's also important from an organization setup perspective 
around people that we have diversity, diversity of thoughts, diversity of uh, like where people are uh, in terms of their career, because that brings a lot of value in terms of how you do your work and how you make changes and bring in more innovation. Now that you spoke of evolution, what's the future of clinical trials, Praveen? Things are going to change at a, at a very fast pace. Uh, we are seeing that uh, with the use of more and more technology, uh, like with new types of data coming in and sort of the way clinical trials are being conducted, your virtual trials and everything. So it is going to change very fast. So to cope up with that, we need to have agile thinking. We need to have open-mindedness in terms of we are going to have new ways of working, new data coming in. So we need to adapt to that. And it is going to be important in terms of how we partner with stakeholders around us. There is going to be a very different type of collaboration which will be needed for us to be successful. Do you have anything to add, Karen? Yes, I really like, Praveen, the way you called out agility and also that fast pace. That means that we need to work differently and that collaboration with stakeholders becomes really critically important, the way that we work with them. So I think over the last year, we've had um, an amazing example to look at, and that's the pandemic with a real call to action for everyone to consider treatments for patients. And that meant that we had to work fast, we had to work in a different way. And what I seen was true collaboration between statistical programmers, statisticians, um, uh, scientists and regulators all partnering to think differently and really understand each other's business. And um, what I'm really proud to say is that even we did that within a company, we also did that cross industry to deliver faster by collaborating together. Now, for me, what we did um, was put the patient at the center of what we did. And that makes us really think differently. And um, as we prepare for the future, that, that is so important. Now, one practice that we've used at Roche is by putting a symbolic red chair into all the meeting rooms. And that includes people coming for interviews who will see the red chair and just people going for meetings. It's interesting that it makes you think differently. If the patient was in the room, what would you do differently? How would you collaborate? Where would you focus your time? And that's been really successful. Interesting, Karen, because uh, we have something similar here at AstraZeneca as well, where uh, we are a very patient-focused organization. And even for statistical programming, we have a question which we ask uh, to any new candidate to whom we are interviewing. Have you ever thought about patient behind the data? As statistical programmers, we always look at the data, but do we have the context behind it? This data is coming from live human beings. It's about their life, how they are living, what they are feeling. So it's very important to keep that context and keep that push patient focus because they are our end customers. Very unique perspective shared. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable experience as well. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and subscribe for future episodes. We would love to hear from you. Please provide your feedback and a review for others to know what to expect. Thank you for your time.